Yo internet. Big day. Come check it out when I got going on. No fusion things. Got you for that little car there. And what's in that little box. Someone left wood on the sidewalk. Beauty. I don't know what you're thinking. Third gen intake. No, this is just gen one. But it's a little more than just a gen one. This is from Derek Perez from Florida. Comp stage three cams in this little guy. Got boundary oil pump gears and crank sprockets already. Upgraded valve springs. This thing is a ripper. It drives to the moon. It's going to go in that little guy sooner or later. So that's the big reveal. A coyote going in S27. Ooh. Well, my original plan was going to be to do it in like one day, but I'm going to gather parts and kind of do everything I think normally, I guess you would say, because uh, I don't have my facility set quite up yet and I don't want to rush it. But yeah, this is this is pretty sweet because this is a, a nice vetted motor. Power by the Hour was kind enough to create this up for Derek and ship it from their facility to my work. And it actually came a day early and it's super well packaged, really impressed. So I can only imagine they do the same thing with their brand new crate motors. It's gotta be just as good, if not better. <laughs> so super. There you have it. Another coyote in the fleet. The third car I swap. Uh, what else is there? Uh, yeah, so Derek uh, was kind enough to also get me this intake. 18 manifold. It's got the lockouts, but three letter alphabet. So I don't have to mess around with that. Uh, I never actually have gotten to see an 18 manifold up close and personal before, but it's definitely like a higher rise. There's a lot of I don't know if available. Like I feel like a lot of the other Kyrie intakes, like stock ones, go a lot down further, but supposedly they make good power. So yeah, so now I get to clean up my mess, and there's not much else going on. I'm gonna. Clean this block up a little bit, like I gotta reseal the oil pan at least, and obviously just maybe give it a once over underneath to see if there's any issues I should be worried about. But this thing was literally running two weeks ago, 
or actually sooner than that, it was the oil change was performed two weeks ago. There's a sticker on here somewhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Derek pulled it last week. And today's the 31st. And I think Friday he was crating it up, so I shouldn't be too worried. And he sent me videos, so shout out to him. Check him out. You can see here he's got a couple few YouTubes of this uh, engine screaming and doing tens in a 3,300-pound decimal run seven. So I don't know if that little pig over there will get that light, but it should scoot it a lot better than that three valve does, especially at 240,000 miles. Funny thing is. As soon as I brought this home, because I took my truck to work, I had to go help someone do something. I took my car, that car, and the 4.6 could tell it was, its days are numbered. It started misfiring. I don't know if it was the heat because it's 120 degrees out or just a new plug or something, but it, it was angry. So maybe it's a sign. All right, so while I was cleaning out my mess, I feel like I need a little more closure statement, I guess, as you might say. So yeah, uh, obviously told you probably about three or four times that it's going to be going into my wind veil. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that car. And that's not where that car is going to stop, but uh, I will show you guys pretty much what it's going to take to make a Gen 1, or I guess basically any Coyote if you use the Gen 1 management in an S197, the early ones and have all the creature comforts work. Now, doing a race swap like the Fusion over there, Ford makes it super easy with the control pack, um, but then you are left up to your own devices to have you know certain creature comforts work, like headlights and brake lights and turn signals, horns, power windows, I mean, it adds up. Uh, but another um, portion of this build is gonna be very possible because I probably wouldn't have done this if Power by the Hour hasn't didn't uh, decide to develop this swap harness for the 05 and 9 cars. Now I'm told that the 07 to 9 cars are pretty much ready. Uh, they're just getting waiting to get back uh, word from their testers. Now what their harness does, I'll show you in future installments of this build, but it's probably going to be a month or more before I actually get digging into this. I'm gonna be squirrel hole in parts. I already got an ECU, a pedal if I need it, I'm not sure. I got a fuel rail coming, um, and I got 410 gears for the thing, so it's gonna be a ripper. Um, I'll probably, if I haven't already, include a video um, of it in Derek's car. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier on the GoPro. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be a real fun project because it's gonna be still a street car for now. Um, AC is gonna work, and with their harness, everything's gonna work like it should factory tack, cruise control, um, reverse lights so I have like a laundry list of parts I still have to get and they're still like all under a grand um, the power by the harness like conversion uh, will retail for like a grand uh, Christian told me and it's just still cheaper than, a con cheaper than a control pack but there's also other items that you have to get into like the um, give me the part number for the TR6060 harness from the GT500s which I'm guessing um, it's like the, the battery side and transmission harness of things, which I'm guessing is, it's from a newer car, like the 12 GT500, but it still uses like maybe the three valve, I, I don't know, I, I, I know it's like a $250 harness, so it, it's just going to be a lot of nickel and diamond that's going to add up, that's going to make the project a little more involving to make all that stuff happy. So I'm super pumped. I can probably keep looking at the car. Good looking car. I've never really liked Windvale until I got one. Uh, I always had black S197s. Now, it's just all about these coyotes. So, a um, little breakdown maybe of parts that I'm going to need. Uh, it'll bolt up to the transmission. I'm probably going to buy a, a lower mileage transmission and a shifter. 3650 Lufi, especially the 410s. And what I do with it, um, I'll probably end up, I'll be street driving a lot. Um, maybe take it to some drift events because I do have angle kits coming out with it. If you haven't seen the, the rack spacers, I have those installed in that car already. <sighs> Probably want to take it onto the strip a couple few times just to see what it does with this. Now he he was putting down like 480 to the wheels with this thing on corn and a Cobra jet intake. 
and LU-47s, and that's it. Well, not much corn in the desert, so we're going to just run the 18 manifold, 91. I was told by um, Alex that the stock injectors are going to work, so I'm going to get these cleaned and flow tested and all that good stuff. Um, since Derek was kind enough to put them in there to keep debris out, I guess he didn't need them or felt like they weren't worth selling, but yeah, so just need a, a 3650 clutch, Coyote flywheel, don't need a drive shaft yet, that's just going to be later for, you know, regular mod things, motor motor's going to bolt right up because it's modular motor, uh, AC should bolt right up, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm fairly certain, and what else is there? Cooling fan, radiator's the same, so I'm just going to get some hoses. Um, when the car gets more serious, I'll put it in the dual pass, especially in Arizona and doing drifty things. It's pretty much uh, your go-to for cooling, uh, drifting. Just getting a dual pass radiator. <sighs> and exhaust already. I've had headers for a Coyote car, the Speed Daddies, for like as long as I've had this car. So I'll just probably get a, either a JBA uh, off-road X or a BBK off-road H-pipe or whatever and then connect the, the cap back to that um, There's like Borla exhaust the Borla So now my rant's over. It's been five and a half minutes um, Thank you guys for watching and uh, stay tuned We need your clothes the boots and your motorcycle No I wasn't asking <laughs>